If you've watched either of my recent streams, you'll have likely seen me working on this real-time Warhammer 40k inspired environment in Blender. It's based on this environment that I spotted while playing through Space Marine 2, and I thought it looked so good that I was immediately inspired to try my hand at creating something just like it. Additionally, with all its densely packed hard surfaces, panels and trims, it looked like the perfect testing ground for a technique I've always wanted to try. And it's a technique that lends itself particularly well to this type of geometry. So today, we're going to take a look at hotspot texturing, how it works, how to script an add-on that'll do it for you, and how to build an environment with it. Let's start with what it is. Hotspot texturing is a technique for automatically laying out UV islands, where the UV space is broken up into predefined regions, or hotspots, of varying size and shape into which the UV shells of an object can then be packed, usually by finding the hotspot with the best matching aspect ratio, orientation, or texel density for the shell that you're trying to lay out. The result should be something between a unique texture and a tileable, with the edge details of the hotspot texture providing a result that fits the model better than a plain tileable, but doesn't require the creation of unique textures. The results, of course, won't always be perfect, but they will very often be close enough and take very little time to do. Next, let's look at creating a hotspot texture, which is actually quite straightforward. You'll just need to think about how many different sizes and variations of those sizes you'll want for your use case. I've gone for a very basic hotspot layout for this example, but you could also lay them out like this, or like this, or some other way. Something to keep in mind if you're using normal maps is how you bevel the edges of the hotspots. I recommend a 45 degree bevel, as most of your geometry will normally have a 90 degree angle between faces, and this will create a smooth bevel transition. Just keep in mind that the bevel won't be as smooth on other angles. I'm using Material Maker to create textures for this project, but I'm really not sure how to get an exact 45 degree bevel in there. So I baked my bevels from geometry first, and then went about creating the albedo, roughness, and metallic textures procedurally. For maximum hotspot effect, it's really just a case of highlighting the edges of your regions with variation and wear. If you'd like to pour over these materials in detail, the source files are all available on my Patreon, linked in the description. If you'd be interested in a more in-depth breakdown of my approach to procedural texturing, please let me know in the comments, because I could definitely imagine doing a whole video on just that. Now that we have a texture, Let's write a script that'll take a model, unwrap it, and lay out its UV islands onto that texture. Of course, there's a lot of standard Blender stuff in here for defining and laying out the properties of the tool into a panel. I won't go into detail on that because it's all Blender specific, and Blender comes with plenty of example scripts you can take a look at. I will, however, quickly cover the two most important properties we need for doing our hotspot script. Those are a pointer property for our reference object, That'll be the hotspot texture applied to a plane and sliced up so that each hotspot occupies a single face. And a float for defining the scale. That'll be used for matching UV shells to their best fitting hotspot based on their physical size. Now, let's take a look at the part of the script that actually does something. It all starts here in this operator definition. When laid out into a panel, an operator becomes a button, and everything that it does when we click it goes into this execute function. First, it'll get the selected object and make sure it's valid. If it is, it'll grab our reference object, that's our hotspot texture, and analyze it for hotspots. Here's the function for analyzing the reference. It loops over each face of the mesh and stores each one as a new entry in a list of dictionaries. These dictionaries define the width, height, center, and area of each hotspot, which we'll later use for laying out our UV shells. Note that I've chosen to store each face as four different hotspots, swapping around the width and height and adding a rotation index. This will allow horizontally aligned shells to match with vertically aligned hotspots and vice versa. Later on, we'll use this rotation index to rotate our UV shells into place when this happens. Now that our hotspots are defined, it's time to move on to the magic. This part of the script grabs our list of properties from earlier, then checks if we're in object mode, and if so, selects every face on the selected object. Meaning that if we're not in object mode, the script will instead only work on faces that are currently selected. Next, it runs Blender's standard unwrap operation. This gives us some UV islands to work with. This next section is just about finding all of the UV shells on our target model, and storing these as lists of connected faces. All of the currently selected faces are stored in a list of faces yet to be processed. 
which is then iterated over in this while loop, using Blender's select linked operation to find all faces connected by UV, storing the result as a new UV shell, and then removing all those faces from the list of faces yet to be processed, ensuring that we don't find the same UV shell multiple times. Now that we have our shells, we can start matching them with hotspots. So the next piece of code runs for each shell, getting the size, center, aspect ratio, and area of it, then looping over all of our hotspots from earlier and scoring them. Scoring is very simple and works like this. Finding the difference between the aspect ratios of the shell we're trying to lay out and the hotspot we're scoring against, and then the same for the areas of both. Finally, adding both results together. The closer the match, the lower the score. So here, lower is better. I also ended up multiplying the aspect ratio score by four to add some extra weight to the aspect score, which was needed for my case, but maybe won't be so important for you. Next, back in the main function, the score is randomized a little bit by adding a random value to it, scaled by a property I called hotspot randomness. This adds a bit of noise into the system and avoids getting exactly the same result every time you run the tool, but can of course be disabled by setting it to zero. Finally, there's a check to see if this hotspot has the best score so far, and if so, we hold on to it for later. Now at this point, we have a hotspot selected, and we just need to lay out the shell. We do that then by first working out how to scale the shell, using the dimensions of the best fitting hotspot, taking into account any padding required, and dividing that by the dimensions of our UV shell. Then working out how to rotate the shell, if that's required, based on the hotspot rotation index stored earlier. I've also added an option here to randomly flip the UV shell vertically or horizontally, or both, for more variation in the result. This final loop at the end is simply going over every UV and moving it into place. First, moving it to the origin, scaling it, rotating it, and then aligning it with the target hotspot. With that done, let's actually use the tool and see what kind of result we get. First thing is to define our hotspots. I'll add a plane and assign my hotspot texture to it using the loop cut tool to cut out each hotspot to its own face. This object is then added to the reference input in the hotspot tool panel. Next, I need to quickly model something and then mark it up with seams so the auto unwrap step knows where to split the faces. With that done, I'll just select my model and click go. And just like that, this model is textured and we can move on to modeling something else. Admittedly, the tool is a bit bare bones in its current state, but it's a good start and it was all I really needed to get the bulk of this environment done. If you have any cool ideas for new features for this tool, please share them in the comments below. And that's it for this video. If you like what you're seeing and want to see more content like this, do not hesitate to like and subscribe. And if you wanna get your hands on the project files for this video, including this environment and those for all of my other videos, you can do that over on my Patreon, linked in the description. Finally, thank you very much for watching.